In this video, I want to talk about some of the remarkable changes that Weddell seal mothers and their pups go through during the first month or so of life. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that is to take a look at a pair of images of the same animals right near birth and then about a month later. In both cases, the mother is on the top and the pup is on the bottom. So here's the mother and the pup when the pup is a day or two old. On October 30th, a very typical birth date in our study area in Erebus Bay, Antarctica. And the same animals, again, with the mother on top and the pup on the bottom on December 2nd. So just over a month has gone by. I just want to put some numbers and a little bit of biology to these changes for you. So typically, when the pup is born, the mother weighs about a thousand pounds. So that, to put it in perspective, is about the same weight as a thoroughbred racing horse, about a thousand pounds. The typical pup, when it's born, is about 66 pounds. 30 or so days later, the mother has gone from that thousand pound animal to about a 650 pound animal. So she's lost about a third of her weight, about 330, 350 pounds is quite common. Take that off of a thousand pound animal. So she's lost about a third of her weight. What she's done is converted these stored body reserves and converted those into milk. And the milk in Weddell seals, like it is in many marine mammals, is very fatty, very calorie dense. Their milk fat is about 47% or so. So very dense milk. And the pup is drinking that milk and gaining about five pounds a day, which lets it go from this 66 pound animal, that's about the weight of a second grader in human terms, gains about 160 pounds, five pounds a day for 30 days or so. And so it can go from the 66 pound animal, second grader sized animal, up to 220 to 320 pounds, 200 something pounds is quite typical at a month old or so. And so they've gone from the size of a second grader to the size of an NFL football player. So those are common themes. The mothers are very attentive to their pups. And we not only are interested in the averages, we're also interested in how do these patterns might change across individual animals. And so we've looked at the before and after weights um, for lots and lots of animals. Here we've got a pair uh, where the pup is quite new here on November 3rd in this case, and we'll swipe the other direction. And here's the pair a month later on December 2nd. Here we've got another pair uh, November 3rd uh, when the pup is new and the mother's not quite as heavy as some of those upper numbers uh, for some of those upper animals. And here we see a pup that's not quite as heavy looking um, a month later. And so we're very interested in this kind of individual variation that goes on. And one of the things we've learned is that some individual mothers weigh an awful lot more than others. Um, we've had mothers that have weighed upwards of 1,200 pounds when they've given birth and some young mothers that have weighed down around 770 pounds. So a swing of 400 pounds or more uh, between mothers, we've learned that that tends to be a repeatable feature of a female. Some females just tend to get heavier when they give birth, and that translates to them giving birth to heavier pups um, by a little bit. But the bigger difference is by the time those pups wean, the heavier their mothers are, the heavier those pups tend to be when they go off into the world on their own. So the next question we have um, that we're very interested in answering is if your mother has weaned you at a really big weight like this pup versus a more middle of the road type pup that's in the couple hundred pound range versus let's take this pup across to maybe a slightly smaller weaning weight, does that have any influence on how well you do at surviving those first few years of life on your own out in the Antarctic environment. So these are questions we hope to answer in the future.